Hey, what's up guys, Alex here. Thank you for checking this video and welcome to another episode about Affinity Designer where we're gonna continue our work on the Turnip Man that it's looking pretty sharp but kind of overweight probably because it's eating too much cabbage. Welcome again. So as I said, we're going to continue the work on the turnip man. And right now what we have to do, or at least what I like to do is to finalize the basic shape, the shape of the body and all the gradients to be sort of like complete. So I can move on and start working on details, start working on the strokes on like all the details of the face and all this kind of stuff. So here we have to tackle these hard cut of the arm. So we need to properly blend the arm with the body that it's underneath to have like a smoother shape and not this like hard cut that we have uh, on the shoulder. In order to do that, we can use uh, the first approach that is using a layer mask. If we use a layer mask, in order to use a layer mask, we need to select the layer where we want to apply the layer mask and then click in the layer palette, this button at the bottom called mask layer. Clicking here is going to apply a mask layer an addition like a layer mask to the layer itself and it's gonna uh, affinity is gonna always show you that the layer has a layer mask by showing you this white shape here or if we have something in the layer mask it's gonna be visible here layer mask works that if you have a black color or a black shape in the layer mask is gonna hide whatever it's inside the layer where the mask is applied to if you have white color if it's completely white it's gonna reveal so the layer mask doesn't use any color it uses only white and black and all the different gradations of gray in between white and black. So with this method, we can create a gradient that goes from white to black and we can hide and create a smoother transition and not a hard cut that we currently have. So let's take a look on how to do it. Let's click on the layer mask. Let's not click on the layer itself, but let's be sure that the layer mask is selected. And then let's grab the gradient tool and just like draw a simple gradient. Then let's select the dot, the color that it's on top of the arm, and let's assign it a full white color. Then let's select the dot color that it's on the body, so outside the arm, and let's assign a completely black color. If we move the gradient around, you will notice here that when the black color goes on top of the arm, it starts to hide the part of the layer, so the shoulder. And the, the software is creating this smooth transition between black and white, so all this gradient, this gray gradient, it's using it as a layer mask, so it's creating a, not a hard cut, but a smooth transition in between the end of the arm and like the part where the white is. And this is kind of good, it's, it's kind of a good result. So if we deselect now, as you notice, as you can see here, we don't have a hard cut anymore. It's just a smooth transition, kind of works good and that's pretty much it. Like this is the result that we wanted to achieve. The problem here is that if we want to edit this gradient, if we decide in the future we want to just uh, extend it a little bit or change it or we want to, I don't know, do something different, we cannot edit it anymore because this gradient, this layer mask, doesn't retain the vector element of the gradient. So if we select the layer mask and we select again the gradient, we don't have any way accessible it's not accessible the previous gradient that we did it's just this it it's sort of like a pixel layer it's not a vector anymore so the gradient is there on that mask if we want to edit it we have to redo it again from scratch and we have to redefine everything white and then black and then reassign it and change it so if you want to use this method, this approach, so creating a layer mask and then applying a gradient, it's good if you have something really simple, if you have like a regular linear transition or radial transition, whatever, but you know that you don't have to touch it anymore in the future, you can use this method. If you know that this is not the final part and you want to edit it and you want the ability to be editable in the future, the layer mask is not a, a good solution. You could use still a layer mask, but in a different way. So let's select the layer mask and let's delete it to remove it. You can use a layer mask with a shape 
So let's create, for example, this uh, oval shape and let's assign it a completely white um, filling and then let's rotate it a little bit to make it sort of like fit the same angle of the arm and now we're gonna use this layer as a mask layer in order to do that we can select the layer drag it and drop it in a specific position to the layer that we want to mask so if we go below that it's gonna have like uh, the software is gonna make appear this like ghost rectangle, this ghost blue uh, rectangle to show us where are we gonna drop this layer. If we move it a little bit to the right, it's gonna be indented after the thumbnail. That means that the white layer is gonna be a grouped dependent layer of the front arm layer. If we move it on top right beside the thumbnail we're gonna have this vertical blue uh, layer the blue ghost layer that it means that the layer that we're gonna drop in that position is gonna be used as a mask layer and that's what we want so let's drop it here now we have the same if we collapse these two layers we have the same exact results as we did before as we had like created a layer mask that's good, but in this case we can select the layer mask and we have these masks that it's a vector uh, and it's manageable. So if we, as you notice, like if I close it here, I'm completely like removing, hiding what's underneath, what's outside the layer mask. If I reselect the layer mask, I can select the shape. Unfortunately, Affinity Designer doesn't recognize a gradient. So if we apply a gradient to this, um, shape and we do like black and then white the same gradient that we had before you see like I'm, I'm moving it around I'm moving the gradient but it's completely ignored because the layer mask cannot have a shaped gradient on uh, like a, a, a shape with a gradient on top and that's that's kind of weird because this method works in Affinity in uh, Illustrator so I was thinking maybe they have the same approach and I, I was kind of confused at, at the beginning but then I realized that it's completely different because Affinity Design has another tool that we're gonna see in a moment. To do this, to use this layer mask as like a regular kind of layer and just have a smooth transition we can simulate it by using the blur effect to this layer itself so selecting the layer mask go to the effect palette and then check the Gaussian blur by using the Gaussian blur we can extend the Gaussian blur until the edge starts blurring a little bit so if we go here you notice now the thumbnail is kind of blurry so we can expand the um, shape to not affect any other parts of the layer that we're masking and then we can cut it down go down and then increase a little bit the Gaussian blur to be like a better blurry uh, transition and that's it so this is kind of a similar result that we had before but in this case we can in the future change this layer if we want to like more blurry uh, like a harder gradient or a more smoother gradient we can do it by having this shape and the effects of blurring the edges of the shape so creating this smooth transition the problem with this approach is that if we have uh, a really complex scene or like some different shapes that goes on top of the of each other having managing this stuff it's kind of hard because if, if if you notice like we cannot blur only a section or just only the top part of our shape it's blurring the entire shape so we need to expand our shape in order to not affect other part of the layer itself and that could be kind of complicated in the future uh, but as always, if your layout, if your design, if your character is kind of simple, you can use this approach. The final approach, let's delete the layer mask. The final approach, it is the one that I personally like the most and I personally use it, is using the transparency tool of Affinity Designer. The transparency tool, it's basically a layer mask attached to the to the layer that you can use gradients in order to manage the transparency of that layer and that's perfect so 
In order to use it, let's select the front arm layer and let's select the transparency tool that is directly below the gradient tool. Let's click it here and let's draw um, just a gradient. As you notice, the interface is identical to the gradient that we were using it in the layer mask, but the result or like the way it works is the opposite. Uh, for the mask, if it's black, it's hiding, and if it's white, it's revealing. For the transparency tool, if it's black, it's showing, if it's white, it's hiding. So it's completely the opposite. I don't know why they did that. It could be kind of confusing in the beginning, but it's kind of normal. So let's move it here. The black is on the part that we want to show, that we want to maintain to show, and the white is the part that it's hiding the shape. And if you notice, this is not managed through colors, because if I select the black dot in the color palette, it's still completely white here. If I select the white color, it's still white. The thing that changes is the opacity. So black means 100% of opacity. White means 0% of opacity. So it's using literally transparency to create and manage this gradient. And that's what we wanted. We don't want to mess with color, only with transparency. And as you notice here, the transparency tool doesn't create any extra layer, any mask. It's directly attached as an option to the uh, layer itself. We deselected outside, look how easy and quick was to make this transition without extra and uh, without extra layers or extra shapes and here in the thumbnail we have also the preview of how the transparency is applied to this shape and this is wonderful if we want to edit the transparent gradation gradient that we created we can just simply select the layer and select again the transparency tool and you notice here it maintains the transparency if we want to remove completely the transparency tool we can select it from the type of transparency and click it to none it's going to be removed completely and if you notice here the drop down is identical to the gradient tool you can check the video that i did about the gradient tool, how I explain all the options and features. Here we have linear, elliptical, radial, and conical. So it's just completely manageable. It has this regular gradient tool, but affects only the transparency and it works with opacity. So now that we have this new technique that I personally like it is the third option. I'm going to do it and apply the same to the uh, leg. And uh, let's see what we're going to create now. So um, we could apply the transparency to the body, but that could be kind of uh, difficult because the body also it's supposed to cover the back leg. So we don't want to create any transparency here. We want to just create a smooth transition. So what we could do, we could put the leg on top of the body and then apply the transparency to the leg itself. Let's check the transparency tool. Let's create this gradient and let's flip it, of course. So the black shows and the white reveal so now we have this small issue because this gradient in order to make it work we have to avoid this hard cut but as soon as we start um, hiding the hard cut here we have an issue because the way my character is designed this leg is cutting completely and it's revealing the the bottom part the part underneath I don't want that but the transition works kind of now so let me fix the transition a little bit here a little bit more yes the transition kind of works and it's kind of good I don't see the hard cut anymore but I have these weird section here that I don't really like. In order to avoid it, what I like to do, I like to duplicate the layer of the leg. So Command G, Control J, or right click and duplicate. I completely remove the transparency and then I use this leg underneath, underneath the body. So in uh, this way, even if my leg uh, it's completely hidden in order to create a smooth transition, I will also have the leg underneath the body in order to avoid to see what's underneath, what I'm not supposed to see. So now we can better control the transparency 
of this leg without risking to reveal what's we're, what we're not supposed to see. So let's play a little bit with this gradient and let's try to make it work. And here at the in the bottom leg, we can apply again the transparency tool to remove the hard cut that we have on the top part without affecting this part. So let's do something like that. Oh, that's starting. It's starting to look beautiful. And here, let's change it a little bit more to have this. Okay, that's kind of neat, right? So we have the uh, leg that we have the top leg that it's revealing only the part on the back. So before the bum cheek, <laughs> and then we have the bottom leg that it's. Um, taking care of avoiding to see what's underneath. But we have the belly with a smooth, nice transition that goes on top, but then smoothless like it attaches to the hip like it's supposed to happen. So it's not a hard cut in between like the leg and the belly, but it's like a smooth, nice transition that we're gonna uh, emphasize with the stroke in the future. But that's pretty much it. I don't know if we wanna apply a transition like a transparency here, probably we should maybe, I mean, it's not that visible, so I think it's good. I think it looks it looks pretty good. So that's pretty much it for this episode. I showed you how to use uh, three different methods to use the mask layer, a gradient tool to mask it, or a shape with a blur effect, or the transparency tool to create these nice smooth transitions. And of course, depending on the complexity of your character or the style of your character, you can use one or the others. Like it doesn't really matter. It like it depends on how you feel comfortable and which tool fits your needs the best. So I think that's it. In the next lesson, we're going to check how to start making some strokes and applying details and bring this character to life. So it's going to be really funny and interesting. Thank you so much, guys, for checking this video. And I talk to you in the next lesson. Bye.